This is a lovely little heart-shaped bag, um, all fully lined, one handle that goes from one side to the other and that's attached with buttons. Now what I'm going to show you how to do is to create the perfect heart-shaped template. So you can make the bag in any size that you like, even a longer, thinner one if you prefer that shape of heart. I'll show you how to line it and I'm going to show you how to sew buttons on on your sewing machine as well. So let's get our fabric, our scissors, our sewing machines at the ready. And let's get sewing. So the first thing we need to do is to draw the perfect shaped heart and the easiest way to do that if you don't have a template is to take your piece of paper and this is just an A4 sheet of paper and I'm folding that in half. I've also got a plate, this is to measure um, six and a half inches across and I'm going to pop the plate slightly overlapping that centre mark I think that'll do, um, by about five centimetres, which is two inches. Okay, and then from that centre fold, just going to draw around the circle like so. And then from the one side, this is going to be quite a fat heart, but it's a, it's a bag, so I want it to be quite roomy. I'm just going to draw straight down the side. And then we'll fold this back in half again and cut out the shape. And there's my heart. Now you can create different shapes of heart using the same technique as well. If you decide, actually I, I want that little V shape down the centre to be a little bit deeper, there's no reason why you can't just cut that a little bit deeper like so. So I have a practice with just some, I don't know, some newspaper or some old um, copy paper that you don't really need. It's a little bit too deep now so I'm going to trim the top off here until you get the perfect heart. If you prefer um, one of those Scandinavian types of hearts, which won't look so good on a bag, I don't think, then make your circle smaller here and just extend it even more into a point down the side so you can create lots of different shapes of hearts. But that one's fine for the bag that I'm making. So the next thing I need to do is to transfer that pattern onto a fabric. So my outer fabric, I have, it's got little hearts on it, funnily enough. And what I'm going to do, I've put some fusible fleece on the back of there already just to give it a little bit of stability. Um, you can use wadding if you like or just some fabric stabiliser. And the reason I'm cutting this and then putting the two pieces together is that I've got a directional print. So if I just folded the fabric in half and cut two sides, I'm going to have one half that's upside down. So let me line the fleece up together and just make sure I'm cutting both pieces of fabric in the right direction. And that's perfect. All right, because I've kind of got a, a check on this as well. I just want to make sure that um, the lines are sitting straight. I don't want the lines to be slightly off and diagonal because that would look really odd. So I'll have a few pins in here and then cut out your shape. Um, if you don't have fusible fleece, you can use um, just wadding or batting. Um, polyester is fine for something like this. I, I do prefer a, a cotton batting, to be honest, but polyester is fine. Um, or you can buy a fabric stabiliser, slightly heavier this time than the cotton fabric, which doesn't have any loft, so it doesn't, it's not fleecy like this one, but it will give your fabric a little bit more stability. Or if you're using a heavier weight of fabric, like a, a, I don't know, a denim or canvas or curtain weight fabric, probably won't need any kind of stabiliser. Okay, so just simply cutting around the shape. And then I'll need two more of these. Let's chop you off, that'd be easier. Um, in a lining fabric. I do like everything to be lined. This um, little style of bag as well, you can make in any shape you like. It could be a circle, it could be an oval, it could be a square. It all pretty much works in the same way. All right, so that's going to be the outside of my bag. My lining I'm having in a contrasting check. So no fusible fleece or interfacing or anything on this piece. Oh, 
Ooh, just about enough room there. There we go. And you can, if you wish, if you've got um, a cardboard template, it may be difficult to actually cut around. So you could draw around that shape instead and then cut it out if you find it easier. There we go. Now then we need to decide how wide the opening is going to be on my bag. So on the lining section, if I just fold this over in a straight line from one side to the other, that's how big I want the opening to be. So it's around about halfway down the curved side. Or, to be exact, six centimetres. So I'm going to put a little mark where the top of each one of those sections is going to be, just on both sides like so, and on this side as well. Okay. And if you want to make sure that that is symmetrical, because we, we want that to be a straight line across there, just fold the whole thing in half and those two side pieces should meet up. Then we're going to sew the lining to the outside of the bag. But just from one of those marks that you've just made, round into the V-shape and across to the other mark there. I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And gently take this around the curve so that you get a nice, smooth stitch line. If you need to stop, stop with the needle in the down position. If you don't have an up-down position on your sewing machine, then turn the hand wheel towards you so the needle is down. And then you can lift up your foot pivot this around and carry on sewing. Now because I've come into the V shape of the heart, I don't want to go into the V and then sew around the other side because it's, um, it doesn't seem to make sense, but you won't get a sharp point if you make a sharp point in your stitches. So if I now sew two stitches straight across that V shape and then carry on sewing around, you'll see when I turn this the right side out, I will get that perfect little V shape. So let's just sew around the second side. exactly up to that line that I've just made and we just lock those stitches off. Then we'll do the same with the other piece. So right sides together, doesn't matter with the lining on this fabric but just on the outside. A couple of pins in there and sew around the same curve. A couple of stitches straight across the point and then back around again. Sure they're lining up. Now 
Now then, my fabric underneath, I've missed or I've got too close, I think, to the very edge there. So that's going to give a little bit. So I'm just going to sew over again very slightly inside that same stitch line. I think this is the beauty of projects like this, a lot of the projects that I put videos on here. Um, check and double check. Things don't always go right the first time, but things can always be done to help. Let me just turn that the right side out. And I can see there that I've caught that stitch line perfectly. Right, now I'm going to snip into the point. Not through the stitches, but as close as you can to those. And if you've got pink in shoes, it might be an idea to trim around here. I don't, I'm not too worried about trimming back those curves. It's only a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so I don't have too much bulk to, um, in, in the seam. So again, right up into those stitches. And then what we need to do is to sew the two halves together. Now they need to be right sides together. So open these up so that the outside of the bag is right sides together. Just snip off these threads. And we're going to sew around the raw edge from that seam that I've just made at the side here. So those two seams, those two markings should match up perfectly. Make sure they do because they'll be really noticeable if they don't. That's fine. And the same on the return side here. And then we're going to sew from where I finish stitching here down to the point and back round again to the other stitch line. So right on the end of that stitch line, I'm going to put a few stitches in there to secure them. And around we go. Now because the point that I'm coming up to at this stage is pointing the other way, it's not the V-shape like the top of the heart, it's the point at the bottom. Don't need to do two stitches across. So stop with the needle down to pivot around. And back around again. I'm a machine stitching a little bit slower on this side because the fusible fleece causes a little bit of friction. But don't worry about that, that's perfectly normal. Right up to that same stitch and lock your stitches off. Or reverse backwards a couple of stitches if you don't have a lock stitch facility on your sewing machine. Right, now we need to do the same with the lining. So we'll need to move this out of the way and move that side out of the way. And then we're going to carry on sewing again from that same spot. So all of these hems, all of these stitch lines are starting and stopping in exactly the same spot. So let's push you back under there. Lock the stitches. Now this time I'll need to leave a gap so that I can turn the whole thing the right side out. The easiest place to leave a gap is on a straight side because you're going to find it easier to sew up. So I'm going to leave my gap here. So I'm going to go backwards, lift the needle up and then move this across by about four inches. Go backwards and then go forwards and then carry on sewing. So again down into the point, pivot that around just cutting the thread across my gap, the turning gap, and then back down the remaining side. So let's fold these two curved bits out of the way, right back up to exactly that same spot. It needs to be exactly on the spot as well. If you, if you, if you don't quite reach the stitch line and you don't finish right on that same, um, that same area, you're going to have a little hole on the other side. If you stitch across, uh, you go too far, then you have a tiny little pucker. Um, but that's fine, get your quick unpick and just unpick the stitches and do it again. So you should have like a cross at either side. Right, I'm going to cut across the point of both pieces of the heart. Um, that will reduce the bulk on the seam allowance, so my pointy bit of the heart is pointy. 
Then we'll turn this, where did I leave that hole? There we go. Turn it the right side out. Like so. So just pushing through the curved section, making sure that that side seam is absolutely perfect, because at this point I can still turn it back inside out again and, uh, and re-sew it, even if I need to unpick it. That is looking perfect. So let's sew the hole upon the lining. So if you pull the two sides of that turning gap, the edges kind of want to fold over. If they don't, just fold them in. And we're going to machine stitch straight across where the hole was. You could um, hand sew that if you wish, if you want this to be completely invisible, but I'm not worried about that. It's only the inside of the lining after all. I don't think anyone's going to look that closely. So that's how we're looking at the moment. Now you could, if you wanted to, put a magnetic clasp just to fasten the centre of that together. Um, I'm not, not for this bug, not for this style of bug, I'm just going to put a handle from one side to the other. Obviously this will need pressing and if you wanted to top stitch around there to make it neat then you can do. But I think that looks quite nice as it is without any interference from a, an extra seam. Oh, it's good, isn't it? Right, so need to make the handle which is my strip of fabric, which I've folded in half to the centre. I've folded over the ends, fold the two long sides to the centre, then the whole thing in half again. So you get this. And then I'm going to sew all the way around it. I don't need to sew all the way around it to hold it together. I only need to sew down the open side. But I just think it looks nice, nicely finished, if you like, when you see the stitches all the way around. Right, now my handle is going to go from one side of the V of the bag over to the other. So from there to there, so one handle straight across the centre, and then I'm going to sew a button over the top of each piece as well. So the button I'm going to sew on my sewing machine, so I've got a little trick to show you there, but just to hold this piece in place, I'm just going to I'm going to tack it. So these stitches will come out, so don't worry about being particularly neat. Um, this is just to help keep the handle in place while I sew the buttons over the top. And make nice big stitches so that you can remove them easily. Make sure the handle's not twisted. And I'll stitch again on that side. Oops. Not so that was really messy, but those stitches will be removed. And then I've got two little grey buttons that are going to sit here like that. And I'm going to use my sewing machine to sew those on. So if you haven't done this on your sewing machine before, basically what, what you need to do is to drop those feed dogs. I've got a lever around the back of my machine around here somewhere. Where have you gone? That will enable me to drop them. Oh, there you go. <laughs> if you don't have... Uh, I mean, some machines you can sew a button on with your... It has a, a button sewing on stitch, if you like. I think this one does. 
Um, some machines you can drop the feed dogs and use a zigzag stitch. Um, some machines will have a button placement foot, which has like two little prongs on the end of it in blue silicone, and that will hold the button in place. But if you don't have any of those, this is what you're going to do. So I need to choose a zigzag stitch. Um, so on my machine, there we go, number five. Didn't quite get that. Number five, there we go. Push your fabric underneath, push your button underneath there. Make sure it's square and try and line up, my foot's down now, the holes in the button with the needle. Don't put your foot on the foot pedal just yet. We need to turn the hand wheel towards us to make sure that, oh, get out of the way, that the holes of the buttonhole are right underneath where I'm going to sew. So you may have to fiddle around with that a little bit. Now, here's something you might not know. Most buttons have their holes at the same distance, unless it's some kind of fancy button. Um, whether it's a four hole or a two hole, or whether it's a large button or a small button, you'll find all of the holes are the same distance. But do check by turning the hand wheel towards you. When you know that you're not hitting the button, then you can put your foot on the, the foot pedal and sew the button on. Now, because I've got four holes, I need to manoeuvre that back a little bit. And again, just keep pulling this until I get the needle going through the hole. And there's my button sewn on. Quick, isn't it? Now, if you've got an awful lot of buttons to sew, whether it's um, whether you're dressmaking or I don't know, maybe you're making one of those canvas pictures with a heart just all covered in buttons. But it takes so long to sew on by hand. But this is a really secure way of sewing on your buttons. Now then, I need to snip away that loose thread, sew the button on the other side, take away my tacking stitches, give my little bag a press, and we're nearly finished.